Hello everybody. This is architect Irshad Ahmad Punekar, Professor, College of Architecture, Malik Sandal Institute of Art and Architecture, Bijapur, affiliated to the Vishveshwaraya Technological University, Belagavi. I stand before you to introduce thesis seminar part 2. Thesis seminar is a subject for the 8th semester students and it is formulated in such a way that it stands as an eye-opener for the thesis that the present fourth year students will be taking up in their final year. In the part one, it was clearly stated and I presented before you as to what are the aspects of thesis seminar. What was the need of a thesis seminar is basically to build confidence in the students much, much before they actually take up architectural thesis in their final year. A thought building, a thought provoking and a eye opener for the students to start brainstorming and start discussing out and coming up with certain interactions, discussions and elaborate understanding of the project. What does a project mean? How does a project of thesis can be selected? And after selecting the project, you need to set a scope and without setting a scope, it is simply not possible that you will be able to come out with a successful design thesis. Dear students, the design scope has two aspects. The first one is a creative aspect and the second one is technically competent premise. Now, let me draw your attention towards what are two of these diametrically opposite premises while setting a scope. I must tell you that there are five aspects in the design thesis project. The first one is setting the design scope. Second one is adopting a narrative. Third one is developing the thesis proposal. Fourth is a live or a current project and then the fifth one is the feasibility of the project. Let me start with the design scope and as I told you that there are two diametrically opposite aspects 
one being the creative, two being the technically competent aspect. What are these two things, my dear students? The first one talks about creativity. What does creativity mean? Creativity is the essence of an architect. If the architect is creative, he bags all those credits to his account, which tomorrow, once he becomes a professional, people start appreciating in him. And the creativity of an architect is something that gives him a platform and allows him to develop to such an extent that sky's the limit. Creativity comes from the basic inheritance of the ability of one's own self. You can call it as an instinctual behavior in which the student and an architect starts creating, starts building, starts relating, starts with so many parameters in the backdrop and then he starts compiling them, composing them and trying to bring them to the fora. The creativity has no limits, but as a student of architecture, trying to set the scope of thesis seminar, need to draw a line somewhere and say that yes, the creativity here is enough. I cannot go beyond this because the time limit that is given to me, which is four months or 16 weeks of time in a semester, I must not cross that. Otherwise, I shall be failing in my very endeavor. So, keeping an, keeping an eye on the creativity, you need to start thinking as to how creative your design can be. And talking about the technically competent design, how can the design at the same time, while it is creative, can be down to earth? We talk about sky is the limit in the creativity aspect. And we say that it needs to be down to earth and it has to address those precise aspects. The precision in the final year of a student of architecture with all those details very nicely and neatly done are something which are his heritage. He carries them with him and says that yes, now I have so much in my bag to give it to my people. When I go to the profession, I have so much in my bag. And now I am ready to deliver it one after the other. You want this? I have that. You want that? I have this. And then he goes on and on. This is how the scope is set. Drawing a limit, you cannot go detailing out every single thing. You need to draw a line somewhere. And that is the reason why you are expected to give some very good details of your own creativity. 
you are not expected to give the details of your first year or second year or third year or fourth year level in which you might have learned so many subjects especially the building construction no what you are supposed to detail out is your creativity people want to know how creative you are and how perfect you are in the premise of your creation that is what is the challenge now coming to the second point you need to adopt a narrative how do you adopt a narrative my dear students adopting a narrative is just storytelling how do you tell a story you must be remembering your grandma or your grandpa telling you a story how nice it is you sit on their laps sometimes sleep on their laps when you are a kid just imagine how beautiful it is a moment when your grandma or grandpa tells you a story how engaged you are how completely taken away you are you don't even think of coming out of it and then the moment the story is done you ask your grandma or your grandpa is it over tell me more tell me more and when your grandma and grandpa says no no it is over and then what do you say tell me one more look at the taste that your grandma your grandpa has created in you it is the same thing my dear students you need to create this kind of a taste in your clients your clients today are in the form of your faculty your faculty questions you don't think that what they question you is something that you should not answer or you are not answerable to no there will be many more such harsh questions which will be coming to you or coming towards you from your own clients from your own beloved clients can you say no to those clients definitely not otherwise you will lose your clients isn't it now how will you adopt a narrative adopting a narrative is something dear students can you imagine how does a narrative or a story relate to architecture is it possible now again when i told you that these two are the diametrically opposite entities while setting your scope in the same way my dear students while setting your narrative you need to also take care that there are two opposite entities one is narrative the other is architecture architecture talks about the reality architecture talks about something that you really mean it while storytelling is something that may not happen also sometimes and sometimes it might happen but to make it more alluring more interesting and more fascinating you may tell a little more to your kids in the same way you may sometimes go or cross your limits while telling to your clients but remember storytelling or having a narrative sometimes ends up costlier we shouldn't we shouldn't get carried away by the fascination that the client is showing towards our narrative no never instead we need to always keep architecture which is a reality in our hearts and minds because when an architect speaks he speaks architecture when he sleeps he sleeps architecture 
when he eats he eats architecture and architecture becomes his life his heartbeat and only then you can feel your design now there are three things my dear students what are those three things three things are basically when you talk about a narrative and architecture you need to first think as to how a storytelling or a narrative go with architecture how can a narrative go with architecture that is the first thing second thing is how can the architecture go with narrative and then the third one is how can both of them go together and give you a successful design thesis proposal dear students having the narrative done which which creates a kind of and now the third point is developing or creating a thesis proposal how do you create or how do you develop the thesis proposal dear students there are abilities in every student each one of you is a gem each one of you has the potential of becoming a great architect believe me i'm not joking neither i'm exaggerating dear students if i tell you as to how you can do it you can really start doing wonders now <clears throat> it is very easy to develop a thesis proposal to create a thesis proposal it is very very easy what do you do all you have to do is sit with a pen and a paper and usually students of architecture maintain sketchbooks if you have maintained a textbook or a or a sketchbook i think you are a very good student even if you have not done it so far you are still a good student now you can go purchase a nice sketchbook beautiful sketchbook take a nice pen and then sit down on a nice clean table in a nice environment where you have very nice ambience very nice lighting very nice air coming in and then go closer to the nature sit for a while start scratching your head and now the brainstorming starts what is that brainstorming my dear students it is nothing but you are trying to go into your past you are trying to speak to your past you are trying to speak to your inner self and what do you speak you start asking simple questions to your own self how did i start my architectural journey what did i think before joining architecture did i have anything which i knew about architecture and if at all i had known 
it was maybe because of my friends or my uncle or maybe my father or someone who was related to architecture and not everyone will have this opportunity but you might have heard of architecture definitely whatever you have heard about architecture whatever you have known about architecture start exploring recalling your memory and ask yourself as to how did you start your journey how and what was your fascination about architecture what did you think about architecture ah when i join architecture i shall do this i shall do that my dear students that is the question what was that you said to yourself that when i join architecture i shall do this and i shall do that i want to know what is it that you had thought of that i shall do this and i shall do that and start writing it on that beautiful piece of paper now you got a seat wow eureka it's a great success and now what happens ask yourself what did you think in your first class and especially the class of your design and what did you think eventually at the end of the year so also second year third year fourth year and now you are in the fourth year you thought of so many things every semester that passed it had given you something to think over it had something that you had as a take away you learned something from your design you learned something from your mistakes you learned something from your achievements the appreciations that the juror gave you your faculty gave you you had so many things your friends sometimes appreciated something your faculty sometimes sometimes appreciated something or sometimes you liked some of your design and you thought that my this semester or that semester design was very beautiful and and wonderful you might have liked some subject ask yourself as to what was that subject which was the most topmost of your subjects and then start writing down as to what in that subject you liked very much dear students believe me you have the answers to all your questions and whatever you had appreciated once whatever you all time carry with you as a passion or as something that is a heartbeat is something that you are able and you have the potential in also achieving it that is the answer to your question and this is the way how you develop your thesis proposal now coming to the fourth point what is the fourth point my dear students the live projects or the current projects which are going on and proposed by the government or the ngos or a a hypothesis whichever is advantageous especially in msi aa in malik sandal institute of art and architecture bijapur we have adopted since 2013 live projects and almost every student goes for a live project what does happen in a live project 
the pedagogy or the critical overview of a live architecture that benefits the clients is something that is in the focus of a student. And there might be a recent economic downturn which you can overcome. You can start restructuring. You can start rebuilding. You can start finding a solution to such problems. Especially now in this pandemic, my dear students, believe me, almost every client, if not all, at least more than 50% will be a broke. Don't think that the architecture will be as alluring as before by having some jazzy materials and making architecture look beautiful, so-called beautiful. Instead, architecture cannot be beautiful unless the proper cohesing and proper mixing of the requirements of the client and the end user satisfaction are both blended in such a way that it creates the architecture of the future because believe me the projects that you get will only be by word of mouth if your client is happy only then you will get the next project if your client is not happy believe me my dear students you will never get another project how can you make your client happy i i told you that these are the days of pandemic where the project finances or the project money or the project funding, even in the government, my dear students, they would have cut it down to 50%. And then you will have to give better architecture than before in this pandemic. Is it not a challenge, my dear students? It is definitely a challenge. But believe me, you can still do it. So, unless you have the practical orientation in this very lifetime achievement project, this, the thesis project for a student of architecture is a lifetime achievement. And in this lifetime achievement project, a dream project, you can achieve the, the underfunding as not a challenge, but you can take it as an opportunity. And you can explore novelties. You can create multi-purpose and multi-utility spaces. Dear students, I must give you an example there are thoughts where integration of educational courses are happening. We have the new education policy, NEP. Under this new education policy, the government is very nicely thinking of joining two courses or integrating two courses and trying to make it one having all the faculty into one and making it much more efficient and then reducing the requirements of infrastructure, reducing the requirements of the faculty or the number of faculty, reducing the requirement of the amenities and the facilities and trying to integrate them and trying to make, make them more optimum. 
and this optimization is under process. One such, one such aspect that you can take up is optimization of the space that you want to create, optimization of the project that you want to take up. Optimization, my dear students, is one such challenge, one such solution to this pandemic or post-pandemic architecture. Now coming to the sustainability, you might have seen under this lockdown how many buildings and how many structures of architecture have worked out to be successful have they provided to all the premises of the requirements of the people? They were not allowed to go out. Did we provide them all those things inside while they were not allowed outside? Or could we have given them something more? Could we have created something more? My dear students, there are so many people in this world who want to fill up the whole site with some or the other structure. Can't we create some open spaces? Can't we optimize the open spaces? Make the, make the structure more architectural, more natural, more sustainable and more optimized entity and a special architecture, my dear students, believe me, you could have very well done it. And this is the time where we can take it up as a challenge. Now, only when you go for a practical entity or only when you go for a live project, you will confront all such problems which the contact with the government architects or the NGO architects who would have definitely you must have had an opportunity to interact with. Now coming to the fifth point my dear students. This is last but not the least and this fifth point is so is so important that the formulation of the project conceptually and trying to look at the feasibility of the project. We talked about the sustainability and now we are talking about the feasibility. How can you make the project feasible. Is it possible that we can make this project feasible? Yes, we can do it. For that, we need to make a proper feasibility report, my dear students. Is it financially viable? Is it contextually viable? It, is it environmentally viable? Is it ecologically viable? And ultimately, is it, is it workable and is it doable? Can we really do it? Or is it, or is it just a hypothesis? My dear students, these are some such small time things which you need to create within your own selves and ask yourself and start writing on that beautiful piece of paper and ultimately, I don't expect you to write more than one paper, one page. And believe me, you will definitely get an answer to all your questions within one single paper. And then your difficulties, your task of adopting a very nice project, thesis project, right from setting the scope to the feasibility or a doable project, believe me, you will be able to definitely do it. With that, I expect all my students 
to have a successful thesis proposal and I expect each one of you to go have a win-win situation right from this eighth semester through your ninth and then tenth semester. My dear students, thank you for giving me a patient year. In the forthcoming parts of this thesis seminar, I shall be introducing you to a very interesting aspect in which we are supposed to have some interactive sessions which I think we should be able to do that as well in the forthcoming ones. But the immediate ones in which I shall be introducing is a very, very interesting aspect. I shall be showing you in the way, way forward as to how to relate the theory to the methods and the design to the research. You have a theory and due to theory you will be able to adopt some methods which we call it as a methodology in architecture. And then the design that you do will apprise and innovate and create into a research premise which will give the world and you yourself a confidence to tell on the top of your voice that look, I have achieved it. I have done something great and yes, I can do it. And this is what is my research. This is what is my innovation. This is my exploration. And yes, I am successful. So stay tuned. Thank you very much.